Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to start off with our fourth weekly video as we're going to discuss specific genres of writing along with famous authors and lastly we're going to talk about some policies regarding our library class for this week. And moving on with highlighting the table of content that we're having. So first of all we're going to talk about Watterson's background along with his own comic books and then we're going to move on to certain types of writing that are a fictional and non-fictional narrative and then we're going to link it to personal narrative and we're going to move on to task-based activities regarding basically the theme that we're dealing with which is comic books and then we're going to briefly talk about our library class that it's about the big six models and now talking about the author himself Bill Watterson he's a very well-known American basically author and he's known for creating the beloved comic books Calvin and Hopes his work actually that Ran almost from 1985 to 1995, features the imaginative and basically outstanding characters Calvin, a young boy, and his dubbed actually Tiger Hopes, who comes to life in Calvin's vivid imagination. So his, he was actually celebrated for his own intelligence and even intelligent humor uh, through basically that talks and reflects life in society. And as it's like beautifully drawn artwork, his impact on the world of comic books and illustrations is profound, making actually himself an iconic figure in the medium's history. Now, moving on to the second part of our lesson, which is the writing part. So in the writing part, we're going to be dealing with fictional and non-fictional narrative. However, we're going to start off talking about the characteristics and features of the non-fictional narrative. So whenever we think about that word, we have to think about various, basically, subjects, matters, and even styles at the same time. So we're talking about biographies, autobiographies, essays, uh, memoirs at the same time. So a type of, basically, uh, a type of work that embeds realism, that is informative at the same time, that includes uh, photographs. Um, and whenever we think, basically, about non-fictional narrative, we have to think about... Uh, an, a unique kind of style and purpose in writing um, and we're going to focus actually on the characteristics more when we study and specify the non-fictional narrative that we're going to be dealing with which is the personal narrative the other part of writing that we're going to be dealing with which is fictional book so whenever we say fictional book, we talk about books that are filled uh, with made-up stories created from basically the imagination of the author himself or herself. They're not real, and sometimes they even include talking animals. Uh, fictional books actually contains um, and features not real uh, stories. It tells uh, actually an imaginative kind of story. You'll have characters and setting at the same time. Uh, you'll have problems and solutions. You're going to be dealing with basically... A dynamic kind of plot that starts off basically with um, um, you know an exposition and it uh, ends with a resolution at some point so you're gonna have a conflict you're gonna have a problem you're gonna have a, a raising action a falling um, basically action you're gonna have a climax and you're you're gonna be dealing with all of these basically events in what plot at the same time specify more what is a personal narrative so a personal narrative is a type of a non-fiction basically narrative that tells the story of a real life event or personal experience from the author's perspectives it often actually involves the authors reflecting on their um thoughts feelings and even insights related to the experience that they have uh, or they that, that basically they have faced personal narratives um are characterized by their focus on individual experiences and emotions, making them highly personal and subjective. And don't forget that in a personal narrative, the author typically shares a meaningful or significant event from their own life, maybe a memorable trip, a real a changing kind of, a real life changing kind of event or moment, a personal challenge, an important relationship, something that basically um, conveys the impact and significance of uh, their own experience um, with the intention of connecting it to the reader's personal, uh, basically, level and uh, lesson. Now we're going to move on to what to include and what to exclude in writing a narrative, especially when we're talking about personal narratives. So you can start the introduction with a question. So have you ever been to the pyramids, for example? You can start off with a sound, buzz, I turned my alarm off, and immediately you go to out of bed, and then you can move on to 
basically an information so did you know that the pyramids are one of the seven words uh, wonders of the world so again these three techniques are very helpful and they can elevate your writing especially whenever you you're writing a personal narrative and now we have a couple of reminders that you have to think about while writing the introduction of a personal narrative so don't never forget writing about place itself where does the story take place don't forget the date and time when did the story happen and don't forget to mention your characters who was with you these are very important reminders that would elevate again your own introduction on to the body of basically your narrative so don't forget to include all the details of the story everything has to be included write three different key events highlighted major events that were mentioned and use adjectives to describe the events don't forget the sensory and figurative basically side of language that we use every time whenever we uh, talk about our personal basic references and experiences and now moving on with important reminders don't forget to mention the point of view first point of view i mean we you us and mine use verb in clear description using your own senses what do you feel how did it look how did it sound and how did it taste or even smell don't forget to use transitional words again first second third then later these are very important too they can basically sense your chronological order in a narrative itself lastly what do we do how do i end my personal narrative so we summarize the events again and we write our feelings and opinions so are you excited are you happy are you sad about it so this was the best day of my life that was the end of the worst nightmare so you're going to decide your own basically um you know affiliations are regarding basically the conclusion of your personal narrative and that's it for writing a personal narrative these are the main key reminders that you have to remember each and every time while writing a personal narrative